Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peter Boom Boom Review Stuff. And I am back for another movie review. And today, I am going to be reviewing Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And I actually cannot believe that I have never seen this movie before. Um, this is a movie that came out in 1988. I would have been a sophomore, junior in high school. I graduated in 1990. So this is a movie that came out when I was in high school. Um, and I am somebody that has lived knowing who Elvira was through my entire uh, adult life. I love Cassandra Peterson. And in fact, a couple years ago, I went with my friends to Horror Hound Weekend and I documented the entire thing. I think I documented either on um, on my vlog channel or on my main channel. If I find, if I can find it, I will link it below uh, where we went to Whorehound Weekend and I like filmed the whole thing and we sat on the panel of the Scream cast and that was before the new Scream movie came out. And, uh, but Cassandra Peterson had a booth and you could like, if you've ever been to Horror Hound Weekend or any of the horror conventions, um, they, a, a lot of people, like Nev Campbell was there, the cast of Scream, obviously they were, most of them were there. And then you can go up and you can like pay them to get like a picture and like an autograph with them. And it was crazy because when we passed, and then they're all like spread out in this big room in this warehouse, not warehouse, but like convention center, <laughs> warehouse. Um, Cassandra Peterson, her booth had, I mean, even longer than Nev Campbell, you guys. It had the longest line. I could not believe it, right? And, um, you know, before the movie came out, I because I was kind of like looking into this and I was like, I thought this movie came out long before that. But what I remember Elvira from was, I think it was on USA Channel. It was on USA Channel or Chicago, but I think it was USA Channel. And it was like her Macabre Nights um, where she would like host movie shows. And it's actually how Mistress of the Dark begins. Like I always say in my videos, this video will have spoilers in it. Um, but it's actually kind of how the movie starts. And so in the movie, Cassandra Peterson, Elvira, uh, she is like this host of uh, a TV show that watches like really bad horror movies. And she works for this kind of like local access TV station, right? Which is really what she was doing on this TV show that got on USA Channel in real life that got her this movie, okay? So what she's wanting to do is do this gig in Las Vegas where she's gonna do this like stand-up show with like a song and dance and has these dancers with her and all this kind of stuff, right? And so like that's really what she wants is her own Vegas show. But she finds out like from her agent. So after the, after the uh, TV show ends that night, she's like really in people's faces. She's very, very funny and in fact, the line, I've heard this line for years on RuPaul's Drag Race, and I never knew where it came from. And there's a part where she bumps her head, like, and it's with this guy, and that she has, like, this crush on. We'll talk about that in just a second. But anyway, and this, like, thing falls on her head, and, he, and she's like, ow, and he goes, how's your head? And she goes, I've never had any complaints. And I've heard that line on RuPaul's Drag Race for years, and there's so many, like, iconic lines. I hate that word, iconic, but there's so many iconic lines in this movie that have literally been used. I mean, I did not realize that this movie was the foundation for so many pop cultural references. And I just, I'd never seen it for all these years. And I, and I have to say, before I even get into this, okay, I loved it. For what it was, it totally served. It was a 10 out of 10 for me. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I just was completely entertained. I found it on Tubi, if you want to find it. It's free over on Tubi. You have to watch the ads, but... And then the, the second one, the sequel that came out in 2002, is called, uh, hold on a second, Elvira something. Uh, Elvira's Haunted Hills. So, um, so this is kind of the storyline. So she's on this TV show, and then the guy that owns the TV station, he, like, wants to take her on a date. And it's very, like, one of the, the things I really loved about this uh, movie, and, and not to get, like, you know, super philosophical about this and whatever, but the, the kind of... The message that I loved about this movie was that she's this very sexualized character. We know that about Elvira, right? That she, you know, like her breasts are always showing and she's always very skimp dressed, you know, dressed very skimpy and all this kind of stuff. But she never ever for one minute 
allows that to be a reason why she should be treated a certain way or why people should look down on her or why people should sexualize her or feel like it's okay to touch her and things like that. And I kind of love that that message was prevalent in 1988 and that's really something that I don't even think came out for like 10 more years, right? But in this comedy movie, like she really is kind of like, you know, pushing that kind of message. So is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, a video or a movie about women's empowerment? I don't know, kind of, and, and to some degree, um, you know, so she's supposed to do this, uh, or she's supposed to go on this date with this guy that owns the station, and she's like, I'm not going on any date with you, and she steps on his foot, and then she quits the TV station, and then she's ready for her Vegas, like, show that she's going to have, but her agent tells her that she has to have $50,000, because they want, I think the Flamingo is where she's going to do it, they want $50,000 up front, um, before, like, she has to put $50,000 in the show, well, she doesn't have any money, right? So then, like, her great aunt dies, and so she all of a sudden like has this dream that she's like on it's so fun like, everything is so funny how it's done she has this dream that she's like on this uh, what do you call it like this game show and it totally reminded me of like sale of the century mixed with like the price is right from the 80s and he's like and you win a sailboat and she's like oh my god and, and he's like and cash and cash so she kind of has like there's a lot of these like dream montages where um, she like dreams that she's gonna like win all this money, and so she goes to this ba this town in Massachusetts, which is of course very similar to Salem, Massachusetts, and you know they want to like burn her at the stake like a witch, which they try to do at one point, and um, so she it's between her and her great aunt's driver, her great aunt's maid, and her great aunt's, I think it's her uncle, and um, not her great aunt's uncle, but her uncle, and Victor is his name, and um, they have to break the inheritance, and she inherits the dog, which the dog is absolutely hilarious, and she, it's like, this is like puff, it reminds me a little bit of our dog Tucker, um, that passed away this spring, and she like shaves him down, so he has a mohawk, and his head's half pink, and all this kind of stuff, he's real cute, and, um, so anyway, she inherits her aunt, her great aunt's house, which is like this broken down Victorian deal, and then this recipe book of which she has no idea. And you know immediately it's because the uncle Victor really wants this recipe book. So you know immediately this recipe book is. I get so excited talking about movies. Oh my god, I love talking about movies. Um, you know right away. This is like me talking to my good Judy Tanya Jean about this movie. But anyway, you know right away this is recipe book is going to be a bunch of like hocus pocus. <laughs> you just know it is right. Right? And in fact, this one part, like, she has this crush on this guy that's, like, real beefy. He's, like, the look of, like, the beefy guy in the 80s, the bad 80s movies, you know, that you would watch, like, on USA Channel, like, at 2 o'clock in the morning. He was always, like, the, the good-looking, you know, WrestleMania type. Anyway, so she goes in to cook him dinner, and, like, when she brings it out, it's, like, this gross casserole that she's cooked up with all of these witchy herbs and stuff, and it's, like, this creature that comes out, and that's kind of, like, how they find out that she's a witch, and then he, they go up to the attic, and they've got all this kind of cool stuff, but anyway, then she realizes that her uncle Victor, like, is trying to get this recipe book because she's, could possibly be, like, this really powerful witch, and so then there's all these people in town that are, like, the town is, like, super Christian, and, like, there's this one character, I can't remember her name, but she has been in so many movies, and she is so fantastic, I wish I knew what her, um, if I looked up the cast, I could find out her name, hold on a second, her name, uh, Edie McClurg, I think is her name, is it Amy McClurg? Yeah. And she plays this character named, like, Chastity something. And, and she's, like, on the city county or the city. Uh, she sits on, like, the city council. And, like, all these people are, like, trying to get uh, Elvira kicked out of town and all this kind of stuff. And Elvira, like, teams up with, like, the teenagers in town. And they, like, like love her. And they'll do anything for her. And she does, like, this movie night. And there's one woman that's, like, in love with, like, the beefy guy. He's, like, so jealous. She's, like, so jealous of her that, like, she, so at, she's gonna do this, this is, like, the best, right? So she does this, like, flash that and dance montage. She shows a movie at the movie house, like, at midnight for the teenagers that aren't supposed to be having snuck out, and she shows this, like, flash dance movie montage where she's, like, just a maniac, and then it's supposed to be gold glitter that falls on her, but this woman that's real jealous of her, I think her name's Patty or Patsy, Patty, she owns, like, the local diner, she changes it and puts, and she tars and feathers her, and 
Elvira's had it, right? So she like makes this brew that makes everybody at this picnic like super sexual. And so then they're super sexual. But then they realize that the Uncle Victor is really like this really horrible, like demonic guy and he's trying to take over the town. And so Elvira gets rid of him. And so then the whole town like loves her and they want her to stay and they bring all these casseroles to her and stuff like that. And that's how it ends. It ends real nice. <laughs> Don't you love that? I love that it ends real nice and everybody loves Elvira so much. But I have to tell you, I was so down with this movie. Like this movie was so good. I couldn't believe how good it was. I mean, it's not like, let's just believe, I mean, it's not a Terms of Endearment or something like that. Okay. I mean, it's the, Cassandra Peterson is not winning any Oscars tomorrow for Elvira movies, but to think about the fact that this one actress, you know, like I just went in here and I looked in Tubi and there's like 10 movies and different things that she's done. And you know that she's just came out with this book several years ago, this memoir talking about her life, which that's a whole other video. But, you know, she's talked about her life and she's so open and vulnerable. And, and you know, she's b built this entire, I mean, it, it's very hard to say. And in watching a lot of horror movies and in watching a lot of just movies in general, you know, there aren't that many actors or actresses out there that have literally built an entire career around the development of one character that they are so well known for. And, you know, to say that she has done Elvira and actually been known more as Elvira, I would say for the first 20 years of her career and just in the last part of her career known as Cassandra Peterson, who she really is, you know, it's just, it, it's really amazing to me. And so this whole I, I thing is, I just, I, I loved watching it and getting to know her better. And I am going to go to the next Horror Hound. I was just found out that Horror Hound, the next time that it comes to Indianapolis, is going to be the cast of Halloween. And I am going to go and I am going to get Cassandra Peterson's autograph and picture. So anyway, if you have seen the Elvira movies, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you have any movie suggestions, new or old, that you would like me to review, please put them down in the comment section as well. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.